Hi everybody. In this video I want to talk a little bit about occupancy modelling and just give people a, a general overview of some of the things you can do with it. So a lot of people think about occupancy modelling in terms of species presence absence and my involvement has been looking at how you can do that while accounting for the imperfect detection of the species. So I'm not going to get into details of it uh, but what the, some of the things you can do is with occupancy modelling you can either look at just uh, try to obtain uh, numerical estimates of, for example, what fraction of an area is occupied by the species while accounting for the fact that you may have false absences. Or perhaps you want to look at the effect of different covariates on either occupancy rates or detection rates. And one of the key things about occupancy modelling is that it has the ability to account for uh, situations where detection may be related to the same types of covariates as your occupancy uh, probability. And if you don't account for detection in those situations, then that can really give you misleading inferences if you just use standard approaches like logistic regression, for example. So with occupancy modelling, we could just come up with numerical values. We can look at the effects of covariates. Uh, we might use them to create maps, for example, species distribution maps, trying to highlight which areas we think a species is, is more likely to occur in compared to other types of areas. And for a lot of people, that's where sort of occupancy modelling stops. They just think about it. At one point in time, what's the distribution of the species looking like? But as a general set of methods, they can do a lot more than that. We can also look at change. We can look at how things change over time and model you know, those rates of change through colonization and extinction probabilities. And we can also do summaries like you know, whereabouts on the landscape do we have the fastest rates of change and to create maps of, of where these changes are occurring most rapidly. Occupancy modelling is more than just presence absence, we can also have multiple states. So we could have two, or three or four different categories of, of occupancy, for example, whether a species is present with or without breeding, or maybe an, is there a disease presence within the, the population of interest, and things of that nature. So we can have more than just sort of presence absence when we're using sort of these occupancy models. There's also a number of other things we can do, for example, techniques have been developed uh, over the last five or six years, we can account for misidentification of the species. So you can have false presences as well as false absences in your data set. There's also techniques that have been developed to look at uh, how the um, species distribution and occupancy dynamics, how does that depend upon habitat? And how the changes in the habitat may help drive some of those occupancy dynamics. So we have these sort of joint occupancy and habitat dynamic models, which will be really useful for trying to predict how things might look into the future. And that's kind of a key thing about these different techniques. Not only are they useful for analyzing data, but also for um, predicting what you think the distribution of the species may look like into the future. So there really is quite a, a wide variety of things you can do with these techniques, and it's much more than just looking at the current distribution of the species. If you want to learn more, um, you know, there's lots of resources on the, the internet and the web where people can look up. Uh, recently, uh, the second edition of our book has, has come out, so it's actually doubled in size since it was first published in 2006. So that just is an indication of how rapidly things have progressed over the last sort of 10 or so years in this general area. Uh, tools for doing occupancy analyses, then we have things like Program Presence, Program Mark. There's a number of different R packages out there that can be used, uh, and all of them you know, have some sort of um, uh, support out there on the internet. Of course, there's also courses that you could uh, sign up to and come along. So here at Protus, we, we run courses uh, regularly, uh, either um, through people contacting us and you know, requesting a course be, be run in their area, or we sort of occasionally will actually just put some courses on for people or in certain areas where people can sign up and come along. So if you want to learn out more, you know, check out our website and see what courses are upcoming, or get in contact with us if you'd like to have one organised near you. So there you have it. Uh, for more tips and tricks on statistics, then feel free to explore our website and the news tips and tricks webpage or so portion of the site. Otherwise, have a nice day and might see you around. Thanks. Bye.